Hello young little minds. Welcome to All Force E-Learning Program. Hope you are all well. Bless you all. I am DNR. Now we are, uh, we are doing with the physics. In this session we will speak about the electric potential due to multiple point charges. So our topic today is, today's topic is electric potential due to the electric potential due to multiple point charges potential due to multiple point charges so in the previous session we have dealt with the electric potential due to a point charge a single isolated point charge one single isolated point charge then the potential due to that we have deduced the formula now today we will talk about the electric potential if there are many charges within the vicinity then how we are going to find it yes so before going to it, just have a recall what what are the basic things what we need to do so to understand this concept what are the things which what we need we will just have a recall of the things there okay now so I was telling you every charge charge is a fundamental property of matter right charge produces field field has lines of force right this the measure of number of lines of force is flux flux proportional to charge inside the gaussian surface every field has strength field intensity it's called field intensity right so and this field field electric field intensity electric field intensity e it is the force experienced by unit positive test charge similarly the charge even in charge produces the field around in that char in that field it even exhibits, it even possesses the potential. The charge possess potential, the state of energy, possessing energy. Now, electric potential. Generally, potential is defined as the state of an electric charge which determines the direction of flow. Whether it is in a position to give charge, it is in a position to take charge. It is its state. Well, it is mathematically defined as the electric potential is the amount of work done per unit positive test charge so you please compare these two electric field intensity strength of the field is the force experienced by unit positive test charge the electric potential of the charge system whatever charge uh, that is given to you it is the amount of work done in moving a unit positive test charge the energy spent this is force per unit charge this is energy spent per unit charge work done per unit charge so you have to make out the difference there electric field strength or electric field, field intensity speaks about the um, the force that is experienced by the charge suppose there is a charge whose whose this is the field the field this is the field of this charge so at a point here what force does this charge exhibit ex, uh, exerts on a unit positive test charge force exerted by this charge on it is its electric field strength now the work done in getting this charge from infinity earlier only this was charge was existing now i was getting uh, from infinite distance from infinity if i get and place here place it here the total amount of work done in bringing the charge from infinity and placing it here the work done per unit charge is called electric potential so it corresponds to energy this corresponds to force 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 per charge this is energy per charge this is Newton per Coulomb. This is Joule per Coulomb. Right? It is termed as force. Force per Coulomb. What force does the charge, test charge experience per Coulomb? E is the strength. The energy possessed per unit uh, test charge is called potential. Death. So you please make out the difference between these two. Well, again, later we have derived the formula for the potential due to point charge. I was telling you, suppose if there is a point charge, then the potential due to point charge at a distance r is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught it's the charge q by the distance r the potential due to point charge the force sorry the work done per unit charge it's 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r potential now our topic is if there are many such point charges in the vicinity it's a nearby area and uh, if I have to find the potential at a point, common point, due to all these charges, now how will you how will you proceed? Right now, 
let us consider some n charges n point charges q1 there is another charge q2 there is another charge q3 there is another charge q4 let's say q5 like this i have i have to find out the potential due to these charges at this point p let the distance of this point p from this charge be r1 from the second one be r2 from the third one third is here this is r3 fourth is r4 and the fifth is r5 there will be any number any number i am taking five charges like this so the electric potential at this point p due to all these charges i have to find out right then what is the process you know i was telling you electric potential is a scalar quantity it's a mere number with a unit right so it has no direction it's a scalar you know you can combine scalars by ordinary algebraic rules you can use ordinary algebra to combine them so potential being a scalar then the resultant potential due to all the charges i can just simply get it by adding it right adding it uh, by algebra so potential even obeys the principle of superposition the total potential we have learned it in uh, uh, force and uh, field the total electric force due to point charges it is the vector sum force is the vector sum of all the forces considering each force individually similarly electric field intensity also we have learned at a point it is the vector sum of all the individual electric fields produced by each charge here this being a scalar it's a scalar so the total potential is the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials when you consider them individually right suppose if the potential due to produce due to the first charge be v1 potential due to the second charge be v3 third is uh, second is v2 third is v3 n charges it is vn then according to the principle of superposition so the resultant potential is the algebraic sum the potential is a scalar just you can add them by simple algebra right so it is the algebraic sum of sigma i1 to in it is v i it is just simply the scalar sum of all the individual potentials so the resultant potential is sigma it is summation first term to nth term right how, how any number of potentials there any number of charges it is the algebraic sum of all the potentials like this so v1 plus v2 plus v3 dot 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 vn just simply the algebraic sum of so when there are n number of charges in the vicinity you are asked to find the potential due to these n charges at a point then the total potential the resultant potential is the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials due to charges when you consider them separately it is the algebraic sum of all the potentials now let us take for example at this point now due to charge q1 first what shall we do is let's forget all the remaining charges imagine only q1 being there now so then if q1 then the potential due to q1 at this point at a distance r1 we know the electric potential due to a point charge any point charge q at a distance r here the formula is 1 by 4 epsilon q by r the definition is work done per unit charge so the potential is 1 by 4 epsilon q by r right so forget all these charges let's take only q1 then due to q1 the potential here let it be v1 so according to that formula due to charge q1 at a distance r1 it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 by r1 i was telling you yesterday potential is a scalar even though it is a scalar it can be positive it can be negative and it can be zero if it is if the charge is positive then the potential due to is positive charge positive potential if the charge is negative then the potential due to is it is negative right when potential at infinite point is zero there are very various cases where the potential can be zero also right null potential point the point where the potential is cancelled null potential it may exist so therefore so potential can be positive negative or zero for positive charges potential you have to take it as positive for negative charges you have to take it as negative so irrespective according to its respective charge you should take the potential so v1 if it is positive take plus if it is negative take minus it is this is
Now forget Q1. Let's take Q2. Let, let's suppose there is only Q2 charge. Write the potential here. According to the formula there, V1 by 4 pi naught Q by R. So therefore, V2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Again, plus or minus Q2 by R2. You know, for positive you should take plus, for negative you should take minus. Similarly, for due to the third charge, potential due to the third, V3, it's 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus or minus Q3 by R3. So on and so forth. Any number, the number of things, whatsoever number of things exist, just add them, consider all the potentials. Take all the potentials, dot, dot, dot. As the as there are number of charges there, then you find the potential due to all the charge individually. Then substitute the, the resultant potential. So according to the principle of superposition, the total potential due to all the individual charges is the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials. So the total potential is V1 plus V2 plus V3 dot 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 up here. Mind you, if it is positive charge, take plus. Negative charge, take minus. In fact, you have to take this as v1 if it is plus you have to it changes either plus or minus v1 plus of plus or minus v2 plus of plus or minus v3 individual it is for positive potential take it plus for negative potential take it minus so therefore the resultant potential vr is equal to please substitute v1 for positive charge take plus for negative charge take it as minus it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus or minus q1 by r1 this is v1 plus potential due to the negative charge so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus or minus q2 by r2 then similarly v3 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught plus or minus q3 by r3 right like this so this way As many number of charges, those many terms, nth one, potential due to nth, 4 pi epsilon naught plus or minus qn by rn. So this way you should add them. Now in this, from this you can take the common terms out. Well, the Coulomb's constant is common, 1 by 4 pi epsilon is common in all the terms. So taking all the, uh, from all the terms, taking 1 by 4 pi epsilon common, I get plus or minus q1 by r1 plus plus or minus q2 by r2 plus plus or minus q3 by r3 so on and so forth plus or minus qn by rn like this so this way you can find the potential due to all the n charges right so this i can write this in in common in simple it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, the common constant, Coulomb constant like this. The algebraic sum, it is the sigma, sigma from I1 to In, I1 to In, it's Qi plus or minus Qi by Ri. The respective charge and its respective distance from the point P. So the resultant potential you can write as Vr equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sigma algebraic sum of all i1 to in its charge plus or minus qi by ra this is the formula for the resultant so the electric potential due to n discrete charges n discrete point charges lying in the vicinity you are asked to find the potential due to all the charge the total potential now first point the total potential at a point due to all the discrete point charges is the algebraic sum of the individual potentials. You should add them algebraically. You should add them algebraically. Then the algebraic sum. So this is the resultant potential due to all the charges there. Right? Then add algebraically. So total potential is V1 plus V2 plus V3 dot 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 V1. Right? So it is now potential being a scalar it can be positive negative so respective value whatever if it is positive take plus if it is negative take minus so it's plus or minus v1 plus or minus v2 dot 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 plus or minus v1 what you have to do is if you are asked to find the potential then imagine let all the forget all the other charges take this charge find the potential due to only that charge if only that charge exists 
then what would be the potential? So the potential is 1 by 4 is not plus or minus q1 by r1. If the similarly the second, third, so on, you take as if you consider as if, as if only that charge is existing, forget the remaining. Now apply the potential due to point charge formula. Then the total potential. So potential due to first one q1 by r1, potential due to second one q2 by r2, third q3 by r3. For nth charge qn by rn like this, then the total potential is the algebraic sum. Substituting these things in this v1 1 by 4 epsilon plus or minus q1 by r1 v2 q2 by r2 v3 q3 by r3. Take the constant out 1 by 4 epsilon out. So it is plus or minus q1 by r1 plus or minus q2 by r2 plus or minus q3 by r3 dot 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 qn by rn like this. You can write in short like this the resultant potential due to n discrete charges vr it is 1 by 4 epsilon this is a common constant sigma the algebraic sum of i1 to n the, the number of terms existing you have to take so many the respective number of terms so it's plus or minus qi by ri so sigma i1 to i n like this this way it is so the total potential due to n different discrete charges is equal to this well in this one again suppose if the positive potentials are more negative potentials if all are positive charges answer will be positive if all are negative charges answer is negative if the positive charge dominate then negative net charge net potential will be positive or the other way if the negative charges dominate the potential can be negative if they sum up to zero right the potential can be zero also right it can even exist zero potential due to all these charges also possible right we will take up the examples so this way the potential due to n, dis n discrete point charges can be found by the principle of superposition by taking the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials it is the algebraic scalar sum you know scalars can be added by simple algebraic rules so since potential is a scalar i am just adding it algebraically so the net potential is like this so the resultant potential due to n charges 1 by 4 by epsilon naught the algebraic sum of all the charges sigma times its qi by ri this way so i1 to in this is the final formula you have to put okay thank you now similarly the same way you can even find out the potential difference between n discrete charges at two different points right here we have found the potential due to the electric potential due to n charges electric potential due to n charges similarly we can even find out the potential difference at two two different points for the system of n charges right suppose let's suppose there are n charges in the vicinity right so at a point let's say the first point is a here the individual distances let let us take q1 this is q2 this is q3 dot 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 there are n charges qn like this their respective distance are r1 r2 r3 dot 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 rn like this first point is a then there is another point b now the respective distances from them are r1 dash r2 dash r3 dash dot 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 rn dash now you are asked to find out the potential difference between two points due to n discrete charges in the sense first you have to find the potential due to all these charges at the first point right then find the potential due to all the charges at the second point then the difference of these two gives the potential difference let's suppose there are n charges it is q1 this is q2 this is q3 right dot 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 like this this is qn charge the first point let the initial point be a uh, the respective distances are r1 r2 r3 with respect to these charges rn like this initially now the total potential at this n point a due to these n charges so considering the thing what I have just explained right now potential due to we know potential resultant potential at a point due to n discrete charges 
it is the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials i1 to in this is the formula the algebraic sum of all so substituting the thing it is v1 plus v2 dot 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 vn any number so substituting in this one the total potential is v1 potential due to the first one 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1 if it is positive take plus negative take minus then i i, I shall take 1 by 4 pi epsilon common out plus potential due to the second charge second one it is plus or minus q2 by r2 similarly plus plus or minus q3 by r3 dot 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 plus or minus qn by rn so that is the potential due to all the n charges right at the initial point e the first point e that resultant potential at a let me name it as va so potential at a va due to n discrete charges so 1 by 4 is not common charged by the respective distance accordingly whether it is plus or minus like that now similarly let consider let us consider the final point b b i have to find the potential difference between a and b initial point is a the final point is b now now the distance of the first charge from b let it be r1 dash the second distance from the second charge be r2 dash third charge r3 dash nth charge rn dash now again similarly find out forget the initial point right the resultant potential at point b the resultant potential at b is the algebraic sum of all the individual potentials due to these charges again sigma of v i dash i1 to in so it is v1 dash plus v2 dash plus dot 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 vn dash well at the initial point they are v1 v2 v3 dot dot at the final point let us consider it as v1 dash v2 dash v3 dash dot 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 potentials due to these charges at the final point then substituting so the potential at vb is equal to v1 v1 dash 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught charge is q1 but the distance is r1 the point has changed so the distance will change so it's plus r1 minus q1 by r1 dash taking 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught common out so plus it's plus r minus q2 by r2 dash similarly plus r minus q3 by r3 dash dot 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 plus r minus qn by rn dash so find the potentials due to these n charges at the initial point separately and the potential due to these n charges at the final point separately considering the charges individually find the potential due to individual charge add them up just algebraic sum add now we are asked to find the potential difference you know i have defined the potential difference between two points the amount of work done in moving a unit positive test charge from the initial point to the final point work done per unit charge from initial to final so therefore potential difference between these two i have proved it is the potential at the final point to minus potential at the initial point i am moving from a to b i am of <coughs> we are asked to find the potential this is initial this is final so potential difference between final and initial so potential difference between final point and initial point so it's vb minus va so this is equal to potential at b it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sigma of plus r minus q1 by r1 dash plus plus r minus q2 by r2 dash plus plus r minus q3 by r3 dash dot 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 plus r minus qn by rn dash minus the initial total potential so it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this one it is plus r minus q1 by r1 plus plus r minus q2 by r2 plus dot 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 plus r minus qn by rn well taking the common things out the potential difference potential difference between the final and the initial point it is let me take 4 pi epsilon not common right so in this one the first term is q1 plus or minus q1 by r1 dash it is plus or minus q1 by r1 right now from these two i can def 
plus or minus q1 common so plus or minus q1 bracket it's 1 by r1 dash minus 1 by r1 similarly plus plus or minus q2 bracket 1 by r2 dash minus 1 by r2 similarly plus plus or minus q3 common it's 1 by r3 dash minus 1 by r3 dot 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 plus or minus qn common 1 by rn dash minus 1 by rn so this way you find the total potential difference between two point due to n discrete charges so there are n charges first find the potential at the initial point vi find the potential at the final point vf then the potential difference is potential at the final point minus potential at initial point vf minus vi well suppose if the potential at the final point is more than potential at the initial point vf is greater than vi then the potential difference is positive potential difference is positive in the sense the external agent has to do work in moving the charge the external agent has to do work in moving the charge spend energy the system will gain energy the potential energy of the system will increase so answer positive no if the potential at the final point is less than initial point final itself is less so the potential is reduced the energy is the energy is decreasing so the the work done by the external agent will be negative energy is not spent energy is gained by the agent there so the system will lose potential so the potential difference is negative if these both are equal if the potential at the final point is equal to potential at the initial point then the potential difference between these two points is zero maybe possible right the potential difference between these two charge these two points at uh, uh, at two different points due to these n discrete charges may be equal so the potential difference is here no work is done by the external agent in moving the charge from that point to this point so no change in energy obviously so therefore potential difference between two points due to n discrete charges if you are asked to find the potential difference at two different points due to n charges then first what you do consider the initial point find the potential due to these n charges at the initial point initially first right so potential due to all the n charges at the initial point va initial point is a so i am finding out the potential we have just in, in, just now we have derived what is the potential for the n charges so it's 1 by 4 of dot q1 by r1 q2 by r2 dot 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 then similarly find the potential at the final point vb then the difference is so this way you get thank you